Oh, I need more. Oh, too quick. Being a, a scam victim has been extremely traumatic and we've lost confidence in the security of our money with the bank. <laughs> Jenny spent decades running a bustling medical practice in Melbourne's eastern suburbs. Knitting Spider-Man thing. She's just retired, but a sophisticated scam has changed her plans. Thank you very much. I've had to be a little bit more frugal and acknowledge the fact that 300000 has gone. Jenny's phone rang on a Thursday afternoon two years ago. Hello. The man calling said he was with the Commonwealth Bank and there were suspicious transactions on her credit card. I logged on to ComBank and then I saw that that was right. There were five transactions in one day and three of them uh, were to a business in Shanghai. What happened next, Jenny deeply regrets. The man got her to install remote access software, claiming he could secure her accounts. When I asked him repeatedly to tell me what was happening, he kept saying, all in good time, I've just got to get this sorted. Jenny became suspicious. She rang the real Commonwealth Bank, but it was too late. Oh, I had been scammed by someone. $300,000 had been stolen. Hey, Jennifer, thanks for waiting. Yes. Yes. So I just wanted you to confirm, you didn't do these $10,000 um, fast payments, no, did you? No, 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 no. I felt sick. I felt stupid. I felt conned. Uh, and I just wanted to do as much as I could to try and retrieve that money. Scammers are getting increasingly sophisticated at the pitch that they, they give to their victims. Often they will have personal information, so whether that's from recent data breaches or credit card skimming or other means. Remote access scams cost Australians almost $230 million last year. The one Jenny fell victim to was particularly slick. It sounds like the scammers had Jenny's credit card details and were able to make some fraudulent transactions. They then impersonated her bank and drew her attention to those fraudulent transactions. And then the third layer was the remote accessing in to her computer. Criminals use what's known as money mule bank accounts to shift illicit funds out of the reach of law enforcement. Mules are recruited and some know what they're a part of, while others have little idea. It's large amounts, it's quick transactions, and it's um, difficult to be able to uh, target, I guess, the online actors that are committing these crimes. Jenny's case landed on the desk of Detective Acting Sergeant Mark Caligaro. He discovered her money was paid into 11 mule accounts with Westpac and Bank West. There are a couple who are listed with immigration as being Australian citizens, but they are offshore, and there are quite a few Indian nationals involved. This CCTV footage shows men in Sydney and Melbourne withdrawing money from two of the suspected mule accounts. The man in the black shirt is only 10 minutes from Jenny's house. I'm satisfied that the, the person uh, taking the money from, from the ATM is the person that held an account. He's a gentleman in probably in his sort of mid-30s. Were you able to lay charges or did the investigation hit a dead end? It appears that they've pretty much fled Australia at the time of the offending and in some cases they were actually offshore when the transactions took place and it's frustrating as an investigator knowing that once the money goes offshore there's very little that I can do. The man you're about to meet believes he was tricked into becoming a money mule. Mojib Rahman is a retired industrial chemist in his 70s. It has been very stressful, very annoying, and I feel really bad because I don't like this kind of uh, transaction. In 2020, after Mojib lost a huge sum to a scam, 
he got in touch with a US company, which claimed to help victims recover money. He spoke to a man over the phone for weeks who made him an unusual business proposal. What he said to me, his uncle doesn't understand Bitcoin business. He has never done it. And he's non-technical in this field and your help will be appreciated. And for that, they offer me a reward, which was very good for me. Mojib Rahman agreed to do it for a 5% commission. Over two months in 2020, he received $330,000 and converted almost all of it into Bitcoin. Should you have suspected that it could be illegal? No, I had no reason to, to suspect that. I was just providing a service. Mojib didn't realise he'd been used as a money mule until his bank, NAB, called to say it suspected he was shifting a scam victim's funds. I had to find out on internet what mule means. When you looked up what it meant to be a money mule, what did you think? I was really very nervous. NAB then withdrew almost $110,000 from his accounts, though most of that money predated the Bitcoin transactions. Mojib says he hasn't been charged or issued with court orders and wants answers about why the bank removed the money. They made themselves judge and jury uh, in this case. He challenged the bank with the Financial Complaints Authority. But in March 2022, it said the bank had acted reasonably as the funds could be considered proceeds of crime. When I engaged in this, I did not think I was doing any crime and I still don't believe I have done any crime. I feel very sorry and very bad that I've done it. I should not have done it. 7.30 put questions about Mojib Rahman's case to his bank, resulting in an extraordinary about-face. NAB now admits its investigation could have done better and has apologised, saying it's working with him to resolve the complex matter. Can you get some of those tall ones? I can't reach. Back in Melbourne, Jenny and her husband Mike are bitterly disappointed that Commonwealth Bank has refused to reimburse their scam loss. You just lose all confidence in... They believe the bank missed key red flags. They didn't detect the visa card fraud and they didn't detect the bank withdrawals until I rang them. <laughs> <laughs> the Commonwealth Bank told 7.30 Jenny provided information which allowed the scammer to access her account and authorise fund transfers. The Ombudsman agreed and found the bank shouldn't pay her back. Oh, grandma was stuck under the sky. The Melbourne grandmother wants banks to have greater obligations to detect and prevent scams, including making them liable for some losses. Everybody, they should feel confident that when they put money in the bank, it's going to stay there, it's safe. <laughs>